So here comes another fascinating eclipse, but this one is different. On a scale of one to 10, I like to say that partial eclipse might be a three or a four, but seeing a total eclipse on this same scale is a million. And here it comes, there's the diamond ring. And that is the most spectacular sight. <laughs> you haven't seen it, you haven't seen anything. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, a total solar eclipse is a very uh, unique event because the moon, by a strange coincidence, happens to be exactly the same apparent size in our sky as the sun. Did you hear that? He said the moon, by a strange coincidence, happens to be the same apparent size in our skies as the sun. The sun has a diameter that's 400 times the size of the moon, and yet they both perfectly line up. This isn't a strange coincidence. It's by the perfect design of our awesome Creator, and it's a testimony to the whole world that the heavens declare His glory. This is certainly an exciting event for those who love science, but it's also an exciting event for those who study Bible prophecy. This sort of event isn't a sign of the end of the world, but the end of the age, when the kingdom of God will finally come to this earth and God's will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. There are many signs that the Bible gives of the end of the age, and one of them is that the sun will be darkened and the moon will be turned to blood, or what science calls a blood moon. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Another sign of the end of the age is that skeptics, who the Bible says will walk after their own lusts, will have a specific philosophy regarding the signs of the times. Scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. In other words, they will say that these signs have always been around. And so they have. But Jesus said that we should watch for the signs of the times, and that includes the signs in the heavens. And many Bible scholars say that the large number of blood moon eclipses in recent years show us that the end of the age is drawing closer. Of course, there are many signs given in Scripture. However, the number one sign that scholars look to is the founding of the state of Israel in 1948, the possession of Jerusalem in 1967, and the return of millions of Jews to the Holy Land. But there is one sign that no one can dispute. Jesus said, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Stay tuned until the end when I tell you a secret, a worldwide, secular, unspoken secret of which the scriptures speak. You gonna watch the eclipse? I want to, I'm just trying to find some people to go with. Do you know the Bible says, in the last days the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood? Kind of a strange scripture, but that's exactly what happens during a lunar eclipse. By some coincidence, the moon is exactly the same size as the sun, perceived to be the same size, and it cuts out the sun, so it makes the sun go dark, and the moon turns to blood, it goes blood red. In fact, science calls it a blood moon. So that's why you should study Bible prophecy, because we're living in what the scriptures say in the last days. Do you think I'm telling the truth? I'm sure whoever wrote that really believes that, but I mean, the moon's not that big. Um, it's just the way it fits in perfectly, everything's... Everything's lined up. I mean, it is kind of weird how it is lined up. Yeah, but, it's a coincidence, isn't it? Let me not question it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to question it? Nope. Do you believe in God? No, I don't. There's definitely an explanation for everything. I mean, we're, we'll never understand that. We're, our brains will never be able to comprehend. Do you think you're evil enough for God to be justified to put you to death, or are you a good person? Whoa. <laughs> I feel like everyone's done something bad in their life. Such as? Uh, something small, lied. Uh, so you've lied? I've, I've lied before. Which have is, you ever stolen? I have. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I, I'm pretty sure I have. Yeah. Would you ever use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Of course not, because you respect her, but you don't respect the God that gave you a mother. You've taken his holy name and used it as a cuss word to express disgust. That's called blasphemy, Daniel. Very serious. Again, appreciate your honesty. One to go, and I know this is painful. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah. Here's a summation of your court case. Daniel, you've told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, a fornicator, 
and an adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. If He judges you by the Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Guilty, guilty as charged. Definitely guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. So you've earned your wages. God is justified. So does it concern you that if death seized upon you today, you'd end up in hell? Emily, it, it horrifies me. I've just met you and I know you're not a dog or a horse or a cat or a cow. You're a human being with a will to live. You love life. You love the blueness of the sky, the sound of music, the sound of birds, love and laughter, friends and family. All these things are precious to you. So you don't want to give them up. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? I have. Almost everybody has, but they don't know this. And Alex, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law, Jesus paid the fine. That's why he said, it is finished, just before he died on the cross. He was saying, paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, a judge will let you go if someone pays those fines. You say, these fines have been paid by someone, so you can leave, and it's legal. You get to walk. Well, God can take the death sentence off you because Jesus paid the fine in full on that cross, mm -hmm. and then rose from the dead three days later, and if you'll simply repent of your sins, turn from them. Don't play the hypocrite. Be genuine in your repentance. And, and then trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. God promises and he cannot lie. He'll forgive your sins in an instant and grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. So you're going to think about what we talked about today? I will. You've got to repent and trust in Jesus. When are you going to do that? Uh, as soon as possible. Today? Uh, yeah. Are you sorry for your sins? Uh, yeah. Let me very quickly show you how you can be free from the fear of death and at the same time have everlasting life according to God's promise. If I was going to jump out of a plane without a parachute, I'd be terrified. But if someone gave me a parachute, now I can control my fears. My fear will be in direct proportion to the faith that I have in the parachute. If I totally trust the parachute, I'll go, whoopee, here we go, and I jump without fear. If I don't trust the parachute, I'm going to be fearful. And the Bible likens Jesus to a parachute in a sense. It says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put your trust in him. So when I pass through death, my fear will be in direct proportion to the faith I have in Jesus as my savior. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Can I pray with you? Sure. Father, I pray for one. Thank you for his open and honest heart today. I pray you'll cause him to remember his secret sins. And this day he'll find a place of genuine sorrow. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Uh, do you have a Bible at home? I do. Let me give you a Gospel of John anyway, you'll like it. And can I give you a book I've written called Scientific Facts in the Bible? Sure. Are you going to think about what we talked about? I sure am. So when are you going to repent and put your faith in Jesus? As soon as possible. Today? Yeah. So please think about this with a sense of seriousness. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. And can I give you two books I've written? One's called Scientific Facts in the Bible. And the other is called Volatile, which will show you that 2,500 years ago, God actually named the nations that would attack Israel in the last days. And that's what we're seeing happen before our very eyes on the news. Nations mustering forces against Israel. God named the nations 2,500 years ago, which shows you the Bible's God-inspired and its promise of everlasting life is worthy of a second look. And you've been very patient with me. I really appreciate you listening to me. I'm so delighted you're going to think about this. So let me get those books for you, okay? You wrote these? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too, man. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Here now is that unspoken secret. The Bible teaches this secular world are his enemies. And because of this, they have an unspoken agreement to refuse to give him the slightest praise or glory or thanksgiving. Museums throughout the world showcase his wonderful works and attribute them to chance, to coincidence, to nature, to evolution, or even to nothing. Anything but say all these things are the wonderful works of God. Romans 1 so accurately states, Although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. But the day will come when every knee will bow not only to God, but also to Jesus Christ as Lord. What a fearful day that will be for those who die in their sins.
Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Here are three things to help you do just that. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, everything you've ever wanted to know about the Christian faith, and the Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks. These and much more are available at livingwaters.com.